I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Yes. Honey, today you are talking about keys, some yeah. keys that will unlock. The key all. that unlocks uh, uh, all that God has promised or given to you. Yes. See, Jesus has given us the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. They unlock every door that we need to open. In my, on my key ring, I have one key. Yes. Because of our lock system that we have here on campus and we got, I don't know how many buildings, I don't know how many locks. <laughs> we don't even count them, do we? No, <laughs> but I have one key that unlocks every door there is on this campus. Yes. And I know down in the in the children's de department, mm -hmm. they call it the Jesus key. The Jesus key. <laughs> because it unlocks everything. <laughs> you know, we need to realize that it's the Word of God and what He says in the Word yes. that keeps us receiving mm -hmm. what belongs to us. Absolutely. Now, you... You have to know what belongs to you before you can use it. But you know what? If you even know what belongs to you and you don't ever take advantage That's of it, right. it does you any good. So we must continually remind ourselves what the Word of God says about anything that we need, any, any, like in the middle of a, of a, of a crisis, in the yes. middle of some, some situation, it's easy to get all flustered and, oh, what am I going to do? But you can start quoting the word of God. No That's weapon right. formed against me will prosper. Yes. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Okay. I got to quit preaching. <laughs> Let's go where I am speaking on the, the subject, the key that unlocks all that God has given to you. People are looking for the key and they hold it in their hand. Now, suppose somebody told you they're going to give you a car. They signed the title, handed it to you. And then they gave you a key and they said, now this, go to this building on this street, this key will open the door and there the car is in there. But unless you, 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 you have the title, the car belongs to you. But unless you use that key, you're never going to get that car. Am I right or wrong? Huh? You see, I want to remind you that God gave us a key to access everything that he said was ours. Matthew 4, 1 through 4, 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It's not written, man shall live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, first of all, I want you to notice something here. Most people don't, don't notice this. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Is that what the Bible says? And we get upset if the devil tempts us. There was something here that we need to get a hold of, and he said it here. He was hungry after that fasting, and the devil was trying to distract him from fulfilling the will of God. Now, we got to go back and remember that Jesus lived for 33 years or 33 and a half years, whatever chronological report you want to believe, on this earth, 
as an individual, a man like us, a, a, a human like we are. He did not live those 33 years as the son of God. The Bible plainly says he was the son of man. Come on. Now, get a hold of this, because it's important, because if people don't get this, they don't understand some things. The devil was kicked out of heaven. You can go read about it over there and said, Isaiah said, he saw, I saw him fall from heaven like lightning. Anybody ever read that over there? Okay. Now, when God created man, he put him into the, he put him into the garden. It was perfect. It was a perfect place. He was in charge of the whole garden. And God said, it's not good that man should be alone. He made him a helpmate. <laughs> and now they had complete control of the garden. Now, Satan is against God. He always has been. He tried to overthrow God. That's why he got kicked out of heaven. And now he comes and he steals God's man that he created. The man yielded to temptation. He got kicked out of the garden. And that's uh, most of y'all all know that. Y'all read that story. I'm, I'm not telling you something nothing you don't know. But now, in order to establish that man could live this against, stand against temptation, Jesus came and lived, and he was tempted like we are, but his secret for winning the temptation was quoting the Word of God. He said, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds, what? From the mouth of God. Here is the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It was written for us so we could live. What Jesus quoted is very important. He pointed back to the word. The word of God is absolutely essential. The Word of God is the most essential key that you can get a hold of for receiving all of the blessings of God. Wigglesworth said it said this in Ever an Increase in Faith. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is the food of faith. That's where my dad got that faith food. Anybody ever seen those little dip faith foods? You know, one time, and I've told this before, I'm going to tell it again because it's good right here. A lot of people get disappointed when you, when you point them to the Word of God. But this guy come up to Dad and said, would, would, you know, uh, actually, one of the relatives, actually, I was got ahead of myself here, uh, came and this relative, some of our relatives were in great danger and about to lose their life. And they said, they came up, Kenneth, would you pray? That's my dad. That's, the family members always came. Anytime anything was going on, they called him to pray. And dad replied, and asked the dad to pray. Dad replied, hey, well, I'm, hey, everything's going to be all right. I already got the word from the Lord on it. Oh, Kenneth, did God reveal something to you? And dad said, yes, Mark 11, 23 and 24. <laughs> and that person with that ejection said, oh, in disappointment. You see, too many times we get excited about a lot of things that really we need to be more excited about what the word is saying. I'm pointing you back to the word tonight. You see, before you can actually have the things that God said was ours, you got to see it in the Word first. You got to know that it's available. You know, we need to continually stir ourselves up with the Word. 
Dad used to say this, and he said, son, people settle for second best. I said, well, Dad, what are you talking about? He said, well, they could have more. But he said, look at them. They get so thrilled and so excited when there's a run and jumping service. They get so thrilled when you, they talk about the anointing falling. Oh, look at the anointing. They get a glimpse of the power of God coming over the audience. And those all, those things all get them all hyped up and they're so excited. And he said, son, those are all well and good. And it's great. And we need that. But he said, that's dessert. He said, people don't realize the main meal is the word of God. That's all good stuff and we enjoy it and it's fun and it's great, but it's the word of God. He said there are too many people trying to live on those supernatural experiences and you can't do that. You can't live on, on the shout. You got to live with the word. Now, I'm not against the shout and he wasn't either. But the thing about it is, in the day and age we've come, you get, there's some preacher coming and they always know that there, there's a, there's always a shouting and really a shouting time and you fill the house up. And you have a, and it, you got a guy that, oh yeah, it'll be, it'll be a shouting, oh, it'll be a great service tonight. Fill the house up. Somebody get up and preach the word to you. Pray go to your, well, and about the house, house is half full. I've talked to dad about this. And he said, it's a shame. He said, that is good and it's great to have that kind of a, a, a service, but you can't live there. He said, too many churches are trying to live there. They have a, what they call a quote, and he said it, a Holy Ghost meeting. He said, I want to tell you what. It should be a Holy Ghost meeting every time people come together, no matter whether there's a shout or a dance or not, the Holy Ghost should be there. Amen. Now, as a little boy, you know, three, four years old, five years old, See, I've been on the platform all my life. In 19 months, I went to the platform because we didn't have no nurseries. And my sister was born. Mom had to take care of her, so Dad take, took me up. I, I, I started walking and talking when I, was nine, uh, when I was nine months old, Mama told me. So I was walking and talking already at 19 months. And Dad took me, he sat me in a chair, and he said, Son, you sat here. And don't you move. Well, I didn't. <laughs> then I got a little older and I'm still up there and I'd start to move around a little bit and, and he'd just keep preaching and then do this. <laughs> I guarantee he had eyes in the back of his head. <laughs> but he said, too many people are wanting to live on a prophecy they're wanting to live on the shout. They're wanting to live on the dance when the most important thing is the Word of God. He said, it's the Word that will keep you stable when you're in the middle of the quicksand of Satan. It's the Word that will keep you stable when the wind is blowing and it looks like your ship is going down. There won't be any of that shouting feeling that you had at the service. But if you got the word, the word will hold you solid. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but I just want to stir up your mind about it again. I want to get you excited about it again. I want you to get excited about the word of God like you was when you first heard the word of faith. 
We need to push aside all the distractions that take our attention away from the Word of God and focus on the Word. The Word of God is absolute truth. No matter what we're going through, no matter what anybody else says, no matter what, no matter what you see, the Word of God is absolute truth, period. Psalms 119, 160 says, the entirety of your word is truth and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The word is truth. You shall, hey, everybody, it says you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Everybody wants to put that back to Jesus. No, it's the word of God that sets you free. Jesus forgive you of your sins. Come on now. You understand what I'm saying to you? Now I'm not minimizing that. But everybody wants to say, oh, it's the, the word of God is the truth. The truth is what sets you free. Knowing what this word says. When you're in the middle of the crisis. Come on. What's written in the Word of God is just as true today as it was in Bible days. You see, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Everybody said, well, where was your faith? Well, let me tell you what. The three Hebrew children had to go in the fiery furnace, but they come out. Daniel went in the lion's den, but he came out. Sometimes we got to realize we hold, our, hold the word and hold on to our faith even though we go into the valley. We, if we keep holding our faith and keep the word, we'll come out on the other side. Anybody understand what I'm trying to say tonight? I'm trying to inspire you to rediscover the Word of God. Like you, like you rediscover the Word. I guarantee you, all of you, when you first got into the faith message and first got into the Word, you devoured the Word. I mean, it was... And, and things of life sort of get you going and you sort of let go of that. But you got to get back and get a hold of that Word. Rekindle that flame. You know, Abraham received... Because he believed. The word of God is absolutely essential in your life. Psalms 132, David says, in Psalms 138, verse 2, he says, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your, your loving kindness and your truth for you have magnified your word above your name. Psalms 132, and the NIV says, I will bow down toward your holy temple. I will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. You've exalted above all things your name and your word. God honors his word. He says here, you have magnified your word above your name. Remember what the Word of God says? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word will never pass. Religious fads will come and go. The shout and the dance will come and go. The feeling, the exciting, exciting feeling that you felt because of, of some supernatural something or another that went on, that'll go. But the Word of God will never change. It will be the same today, yesterday, next week, next year. If the Lord turns his coming, the Word never changes. The Word is the Word. Say it. The Word is the Word. And it never changes. God said it. 
I believe it. I believe that if you listen to what I had to say, that you can receive all of the blessings yes. that God has provided for us when we understand His Word. You know, as you're, a lot of times if you're doing a crossword puzzle, there is one word, and when you get that word, you, it's a key to four or five different words. Yes. So the key is to knowing what the Word of God says and then applying it, and the blessings will come. You know, honey, when you were talking about at the beginning of the program that one key that you have, yeah. well, I'm kind of a visual person, and what I saw was, and the, I think this is what happens to many people, is I saw that key. You've got this key. You've got the Word of God, yeah. and it will unlock anything. Right. And yet, you know, I could go to that door, yeah. And I could say, well, I have the key, but if I don't use that key yeah. and unlock that door, it's not going to come open. There's the key right there. <laughs> That's right. That's the key right yeah. there. And I was thinking, if we don't use that key, the Word of God, to open up all the blessings that He has promised us, hey, those blessings are not going to come because He has given us the, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> he has given us that key to unlock everything that we need right. in life. Right. You know, of course, my favorite scripture, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things right. through Christ who strengtheneth me. And so I use that key that He has given to me that, hey, whatever I have, whatever I need, I can do it through Christ. Amen. That's right. Yeah. So now hey, we got a special preaching. offer, and uh, you, it, I, I call it your bargain bag because it's That's it, right. they put it they put it all put in it that, in a bag in our, in a, uh, hold that up so everybody all can right. see it. It's, it's faith, one of it's our faith, faith bags, bag. and it has some tremendous stuff in it. Actually, there is a CD by me on how to grow in love. Yes. There is a CD by by Lynette. By me the Lord our peace, mm -hmm. and then there is a CD by our son. That's right. Healing belongs to you, Reverend Craig Hagen, uh -huh. and one by our daughter, Denise Burns. That's right. On New Season. So you get, you get, a CD from the whole family. From the whole family. And you know, honey, we present the same gospel in just a little bit different way. Yeah, because the, they're, they're, of a, they're of a different generation. That's they, right. Uh, Craig can present healing. I preach on healing. His, his Paul Paul preached on healing. In mm -hmm. fact, he traveled with him so much that he's a lot like him in his ministry. Yes. And he, he, he will talk about he, the healing belongs to you in this CD, but he presents it in, in, in a different way than I would because uh, he's, a lot, he, he's of a different generation. Yes. And each generation has a way of presenting something. And you would in, I know you'll enjoy these yes. things. Yes, and a different personalities present oh, things. Oh, different personalities and present stuff differently. Of course. And, of course, the best gift is the Legacy Bible. Dad's Legacy Bible. It has 26 lessons on faith. Uh, we, way, way back, I, I don't know when it was, is in the 80s, I guess. Uh, the first one? The first one. 70s. It was in, in the, the 70s. 70s. We had a Bible by dad that had the face shield on it and, and had his, 20, his 26 lessons in it. Then after we sold out of those, we went to, we had a Rhema study Bible, but everybody kept asking, would you, would you, could you bring that Hit, hit that yes. Bible back. Yes. And so you searched and searched. Nobody wanted to do a Bible with, with genuine leather, genuine soft leather no. like this. And you wanted it where when you opened it up, yes. it would fall it open. Would you didn't fall. have to break it to bind and down. Yes. And you wanted a certain print because that's the print that he liked. Yes. And we we brought it back in, in the King James Version because that's the one he used all the time. Yes. And then we put his original 26 lessons on faith mm -hmm. are right in the front of this Bible. Yes. And there's a wonderful picture, picture, picture of dad. Yes. Uh, he's standing in a pulpit there. That's I can right. tell leaning on the pulpit. Yes. Ministering. But now this, this is a, a Bible that is a very, very expensive. Yes. In fact, 
we're offering this whole package for a whole lot less than what they, uh, they, the company tells us we should sell this Bible for. That's right. But so many people have asked for this, this particular Bible. We brought it back. And so for a gift of $140 or more, you get the Bible and you get all of the CDs. So go to your, go to your computer right now right. And, and order this. At rhema.org. Rhema.org. You actually, hey, throwing all the other, these CDs aside, it's a actually that offer is, is a whole lot less than what the Bible should sell for. That's so. right. That's right. Well, Crusade time. We're going to be January the 23rd through the 25th, Sunday through Tuesday at Lake Worth, Florida at Believer's Victory Church, Pastor Scott and Peggy Hill. Yep. And then we're going to move over to St. Augustine, Florida on the uh, Wednesday? 26th, mm -hmm. Wednesday mm -hmm. through Friday night, the 28th at Anchor Faith Church, Pastors Earl and Marcy Glisson. And then we are staying over yes. and we'll be preaching there on Sunday morning in a special, special service there as they have uh, purchased the, the property there. Yes. And it's going to be a special dedication celebration type service, service. Yes. or celebration service, we call it. So, hey. Come on down to Florida and, and spend a, a week with us That's here. Right. That, right should there. be warm. It should be warm. That's Praise right. The Lord. And then Winter Bible Seminar and Worldwide Homecoming, February the 20th through the 25th, right here on the USA campus. So make plans right now to be with us. And we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Start off your new year with our spiritual preparation for 2022 package. It is a powerful package of four CDs and a legacy Bible featuring the luxurious Kenneth E. Hagen legacy Bible bound in genuine leather that contains 26 lessons on faith. Plus an essential CD by Craig W. Hagen and Denise Hagen Burns teaches about new seasons. Also an anointed CD with Lynette Hagen. Finally, how to grow in love by Kenneth W. Hagen. As a bonus, we will also include a a copy of the Word of Faith magazine to encourage and build up your faith. This entire package, including the limited edition leather Bible and the Word of Faith magazine can be yours today for a gift of only $140 or more. Just call toll free right now, 888-PRAISE-8, or you can log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.